Well, good morning. It's still morning, my friends. I am back today, and we are going to try and get through a stitch with me. So, I want to say welcome to all of my subscribers. If you're new here, thank you so, so much for clicking on the channel and giving this one a try. Um, this channel is all about cross stitch and other forms of needlework and tips and tricks and a little bit of life thrown in. So welcome and I hope you enjoy your stay here. To all my subscribers who come back time after time after time to hang out with me, thank you so, so, so very much. I am so glad to have you here and have you part of this cross stitch community. So, what have we been up to? Just a little bit of an update here before I get started stitching. Um, I'm doing something new that we're going to talk about. Um, hopefully, hopefully my computer is fixed. Knock on wood, I hesitate to say that word because we all know that Karen always has some kind of an issue. <laughs> But hopefully, um, what, what uh, was worked on last night has corrected the problems that were causing me to just crash in the middle of a live stream, or not be able to complete a whole video, or get the infamous blue screen of death, or worse yet, the black screen, <laughs> stream of, screen of death. So we're going to hope that this goes well. And this is the test run. So we shall see. So all of you, please bear with me if there are glitches. But hey, is it a needle bug video without a glitch? Seriously now. <laughs> Those of you who have been here know the truth about that one. So what are we looking at here? Well... Karen's decided to try something not new to the stitching world, but new and untested for me. Um, I got to pondering, and some of you who have followed me on uh, Facebook, I don't think I posted it on Instagram, but I did post it on Facebook probably saw that I was asking a question about stitching the entire row, instead of just like 10 stitches wide, stitch the entire row. So let me zoom you out a little bit here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's going across the entire yeah, the way I have it placed, okay, that's down to where I was doing diagonal. So I'm trying to fill in going the whole length of the one row, the one line of, of X's. Again, back to park threads. So how long is Karen going to be okay with having a bazillion gazillion park threads. <laughs> that is the question. That remains to be seen. But we'll see how it goes. So, what I was doing, and I see I forgot to cross an X here, and we'll fix that as we move down this row, because I th believe... Well, I actually can probably, well, yeah, I can probably fix it now because, 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 oh, I already stitched those. Oh, well, we're going to just exit with something else. Shh, don't tell. It's the cheat. 
Now, I had to, in order to accomplish this, I had to do two things in order to be able to uh, keep my place and have my stitches crossed correctly. So what I did is put my chart in the position that I needed and lock the screen so that I could turn my chart sideways and read my symbols sideways because I am doing instead of like from the bottom to the top or the top down um, in order to have it fit on a scroll frame that I have I am going to work it side or top I'm going to work it from the sides in instead of the top or the bottom which now means that I have to cross my X's differently not the wrong way because there is no wrong way but I have to cross my X differently and I have to park in a different corner than I am accustomed to so instead of park instead of crossing my X from the lower left to the upper right and then the lower right to the upper left I have to first cross from the lower right to the upper left and then go the lower left to the upper right because by turning it sideways that has made my X's cross a little bit different but that's okay I'm I'm getting used to it now what oh hold on okay okay I'll deal with it later um, yeah I have to cross a little bit differently but that's okay I'm getting used to it and now instead of parking in the lower left hand corner I have to park in the lower right hand corner so it's a little bit of rethinking but so far I'm okay with that now the other thing I was doing and I'm going to try different today is I was hold on a second I was trying to go stitch by stitch by stitch by stitch. So I would do this stitch. And then wherever the next occurrence of this color is, I would park it. So if you look, I can't point on my, but I can highlight. So, okay. So if I stitched this one, Okay, wait a sec. There we go. If I stitched this, I would then park it here, come back, stitch this, park it here, come back, stitch this, park it here, stitch these two, and now there is no place along here, so then I would park it here. See what I mean? I, so I was always changing, always threading a needle. So what I am going to try now is in this space, I'm going to stitch all of these. and then park it here then I'm going to stitch all of these so what I'm going to try now is to stitch as long as I don't have any big jumps with the same color and then go back and fill in of course unless 
my other thought is this unless there's a big jump with a different color that I would want to carry and the color that I'm working with this is make a hope makes sense would lock down that that those carry that carried thread so maybe we'll get to a spot like that as we stitch along this row so we'll see but you know me always trying something a little bit different a little bit different you never know when you're going to find something else that you really 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 like so let's give this one a shot and see how it goes so I'm going to first stitch the ones that do I need to make this a little bit oh hold on here let's clear all those before I mark something I don't want to okay there we go now you can see that a little bit better so we're going to stitch this this and this at this moment now this is all new to me folks so this is just an experimentation so you get to join in to my experiment here and we'll see what happens Okay, so that's the first one. And we're going to skip three. One, two, three. And here's where I have to watch myself because I actually have to go one more to actually... Oops! I have this propped up a little bit so that... <laughs> so that it would be in the view of the camera and it just like slipped off. It's okay. I want to catch that stitch up there. So we're going to do this one. Okay, that's down at that one. Then we're going to do, and don't do one thread needle. I can feel my thread. this one okay I didn't put my uh, googly eyes on this morning okay so that's those and we are going to mark those stitched and we're gonna park over here because yeah after the after this ones underneath that they're all to the left so we don't have any more of those further right so we're just gonna have a little bit of a jump here and pick those up okay so that's that so now the next color is this which is 3768 and I don't have it parked nearby okay where's my thread so we need some 2. I hate when that happens. Sometimes I end up pulling off two strands instead of the one that I want, but we'll deal. Okay, 
So now we need two stitches. And actually what I've been doing is starting my stitch backwards from what I did <laughs> when I was crossing my X's differently. So I'm going to come up here. Now I will say my experience so far with this has been I need to pull that out. Um, going stitch by stitch and changing your thread every stitch or two is really quite, quite a bit slower. Which is why now I want to give it a shot of following a color a little bit further to see if that makes a difference and I have two colors parked in this one and I think I just started a thread that I didn't have to in a minute. 3768, so that takes care of this and this. And now we're going to park this one over here. And these are two threads of the same color. So I'm just going to put one down here to end it off. And what I've been doing to end off is just exactly this coming up a few rows down, going down, coming up again and then snipping it off. Okay, so that means this one. So we're gonna mark those as stitched. I mark that as frog and put that as a park. There we go. So now we're going to do that one. So that would be this one. I know this is, it's, um, much slower, much slower. But I do like the neatness of the stitches, so that's, that's a plus. And I have to honestly say, the jury is still out. The jury has not decided yet. Whether she likes this or not. So that part of the commentary will follow at a later date. <laughs> so that one stitched, we parked it there. Now we're coming up on the X's. So now here we can get a little bit of a, a little bit of a run going. And this is where it may prove to pick up a little bit of speed. Now, what I will do, as you see, I am crossing each X as I go, which means any I'm not going to restart from over on the left side. As we do down the, the diagonal, when you go stitch by stitch, 
I'm going to zigzag these rows. So this row I'm stitching left to right. The next row I will stitch right to left. Now when I'm parking, I do park if I can. And I think I have an unstitched one up here and we're just going to sneak up here and, and stitch that. It's a not crossed one, so hot cross buns. There we go. Um, I forgot what I was saying. It's called lose your train of thought when you s change the subject on yourself. <laughs> Oh, when I'm going um, across the row and parking, I'm going to park in the closest occurrence to the last stitch that I completed for where the next stitch is. Unless, of course, in the case of over here, where I went further, A, because there was nothing more to the right, and B, because it was the furthest stitch to the right when I was stitching back to the left. Did you catch all that? <laughs> so if I can, and it's not a terrible big jump, I will, um, yeah, I, I guess I just play it by ear in which stitch I'm going to park it. Because, well, there's no hard and fast rule. And Gemma, I'm going to quote you. As Gemma says, I, I'm going to do what makes sense at the time. And not everything makes sense all the time. I'm going to move this over a little bit so we can keep on going here because it looks like I can maybe decently get... Oh, that was my husband leaving. I heard a, a ding on my phone. It was the outside camera. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. Okay, so I did one. I jumped two. See, now here's where I get a little messed up. When I'm counting to the next one, my tendency is to stitch the way I'm accustomed. And did you see what I just did? I started crossing that in the wrong direction. What I, oops, sorry, I bumped you. I bumped the camera, my apologies. Let's get you back. There we go. Huh. I did my old habit of going this way when I should have made my first leg this way. And the reason I caught it is because this line here is my block line and my next stitch needs to be right on the line. So that's what is messing me well, not messing me up, but, um, well, in a sense, I guess it is messing me up, but that's what I have to watch for as I'm stitching because I am, I mean, when you have stitched the other way for as many years as I have stitched the other way, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Changing the stitching direction at first is a real, real challenge. Now, I, do you want to guess what's going to happen? I'm going to decide to change my mind and go back to maybe diagonal or something else. And then I'm going to have trouble switching back to the way I always stitched. Or I'm going to continue this way, pick up another project, 
and have the same problem. Okay, what I'm going to do here, because my next x is until over here, I'm skipping 3. Oh, but that is the last one. So, okay, that made my decision for me. I'm going to skip the 3. One, two, three. Come up in the fourth one. One, two, three. Come up in the fourth one. Cross that one because that's the last stitch. That's the last X to the right. Now I've kind of decided in my own head because you know there's the only rules are the ones we decide we're going to follow. I've kind of made up my mind that I'm only going to jump three stitches is the max I will jump. Okay, so we completed those. And we have parked, I have parked it here. Oh, let's just do this, park it there. So now I'm going to go back to the hearts, to the solid hearts. And let's see where that's going to, okay, it's just those few, and then we can keep parking more to the right. Okay, so we can do this way folks is proving to be a little bit um, faster than what I was doing before so this might be the ticket but again I'm, I'm trying to do the thing of not well, it, it really, as long as I stay just on this row, that really doesn't apply of um, only stitching the stitch if the ones above it are filled in. So that really doesn't um, come into play here. skip that one and we do these two what I want to do is flip this around then so you can see what it's doing on the back now First of all, let me say that I really am not um, concerned with the back. The back will be what the back will be. When it comes to backs of people's work, this is a no judgment zone. you know how I feel. How I feel is as long as you are happy, as long as you like the outcome of your stitching, that is all that matters. Nothing else matters. So that being said, <laughs> I will give you a okay Well, I don't have a thread parked here. I wonder where my husband went that he's back already. He was going to go get chicken for supper. Somebody's having a um, chicken barbecue sale. Some, I think it's a Lions Club or somebody's doing a fundraiser or a ch the church, or I'm not exactly sure who it is, but somebody's doing a fundraiser and selling chicken barbecue. 
So, that is what we will be having for dinner this evening. Okay, so now we're going to do this one. Now, here you're going to see that I'm going to carry it over three. I would have had a choice there to stop here, stitch this one, this one, and these, and then go back and do these three. So that really amounts to six of one, half a dozen of the other. Now I have to wonder if they didn't have the chicken chicken barbecue because of the rain. It is raining here and they want it to rain all day. It is quite the quite the not particularly nice day out there today. So let's stitch these three. And then I will show you how this is working up on the back. Now, you probably can't see it very well, but what I have is bunches of magnets all over the place holding sections of threads out of the way so that I'm only really uh, dealing with the threads that I need at this given moment. Okay, so that took care of this, this, one, two, three. I guess I could keep going here. Yeah, let's keep going because it's only two more. So we're going to skip two. Do one. That's right at the ten line mark, or ten square mark. And then we're going to skip one and do another one. My apologies for my hand. I couldn't quite get it set up right to <laughs> not have my hand in your way. Okay. Oops. Here we go. Back here. This and this. So those are stitched and we're going to park it there. So we're going to go over two more and down one and park it there. So there's three, one, two, three. Okay, we are in the right spot. Okay, so that really wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. So let's see what it's doing to the back. Here we go. I'll tell you what, that's not too terrible. Let's go down. This, there we go. This is where I've done the most because I had a bunch to fill in here before I could work straight across. So really, that is not godforsaken awful as far as backs go. And again, like I said, I am not a judger of backs. I don't, whatever anybody is happy with, that is fine by me. I, it's your project, it's yours to love, and as long as you're happy, that's all I care about. That's what's important. So that's what, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the back will look like using this particular method and yeah it's not it's not bad at all it's not bad at all so that's oh i hate this stand i hate it but it's what i will use until 
until my Dubco stand, which heads up folks, heads up, it has shipped. I didn't get the tracking numbers yet, but when I check the website, it says on the website that it has shipped. So Yahoo Mountain Dew. Let's see if I can get this back up like I had it. Yeah, that's as good as I'm going to get it because I'm running out of place here. And I, I am running out of room <laughs> to put it up further. Let's see if I can scooch this a little bit. Yeah. This is what happens when you have a limited space that you're working with. <laughs> God. God help us. Let me take a bit of a sip of coffee here. Yes, since my stand, my what I ordered from Dubco is a a sofa stand because I figured that was going to be, for me, the most portable. Where I can use it sitting in a recliner. Um, over here. So that I can put my things on scroll frames. Again, and I can have that and use it while I'm sitting in my recliner. I can, it's portable enough that I can take it over then into the living room in the evening and sit either on my recliner or my sofa, whichever spot happens to be my preferred spot for the night. And I did get the kind that has the arms on it as opposed to the one that already has the scroll as part of the stand. Um, the reason I did that is because the projects that I do are of varying widths. So I don't want to always be locked into a certain width. If I, by just getting the arms, um, the things that you lay your scroll frame on, then I can use whatever size scroll that I require at that moment in time. Yes, doing it this way, folks, is a bit faster than having to change thread at every different color. This has some real, okay, I say this today, oh, sorry. I say this today, but next time you see me, I might change my mind. But this has some real possibilities. And as long as you're using, for me, as long as I am using Pattern Keeper and I am marking each stitch as I go. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm not <laughs> I'm not getting lost. <laughs> and I say that with <laughs> I say that with uh, caution <laughs> because as you know as soon as I say something like that it happens it happens I get lost or I make a liar out of myself <laughs> so we shall see 
but this seems to be working quite all right. I mean, there I had no stitches done. And okay, it's a little slower. But given the fact that we're now at 40 minutes and I didn't start right away and I've been yakking in between, so that always is makes you slower. I've stitched almost well, I've stitched 31 stitches. So in the grand scheme of things, that's not too terribly bad. So hopefully, oops. Here we go. I'm going to carry on with this for a little while. I'm not going to just do it you know, like a day or two and um, say, oh, oh, well, that's just not working. I mean, let's give it, let's give it a fair shot or I will give it a fair shot and uh, see how it goes. And then make a decision on whether is this something I want to continue with or is this something I want to say, nope, no way, Jose? You know, sometimes it's, sometimes I think we're too quick. Okay, I'm speaking for myself only. Sometimes I am too quick to say, ooh, ooh, I love it, or ooh, ooh, I hate it. Sometimes I don't always give it enough of a of an assessment period before saying yes or no to something. So hopefully I can hang in there, give this a fair shot, and see how it goes. And let's move our thing again. Because now we're getting down into some totally different symbols again. We're getting we're getting down close. It won't be too far till we have a till we have a whole row done. The other thing I wanted to tell you folks about is if you are a fan or you you want to try the ballpoint needles I would highly suggest and it's just a suggestion but I have been using them for oh, maybe two going on three weeks now I looked up, instead of searching for a ballpoint needle, because what these ballpoint needles really are, and where the whole idea of ballpoint needles came from for using, to use them for cross stitch, is the fact that they truly really are a weaver's needle. A person that weaves cloth they are a weavers needle and they come in different sizes the lowest I've seen is 37 and that's the smallest the largest I've seen is like a hundred and something and those I would imagine would be pretty big I got because I wanted to thread size 12 pearl cotton in it, I got 48s. My friend Barb got 40s. And let me tell you, these are way, again, my opinion. No affiliation with anybody, just my opinion. 
these are way nicer than any of the needles I've used that are sold as a ballpoint needle. I think, although I don't know for sure, I think they could very well be a stainless steel needle, not a piece of metal coated with nickel. Now I've been using this one pretty much since I got it and look at that. I don't know if you can tell, but it looks, you can probably see it better against here, it looks brand new. Absolutely look there, still shiny, still shiny. It looks brand new. It glides, I mean totally just glides through your fabric. I am impressed, totally impressed. It is the nicest needle when you can find the hole because I'm coming up in a hole that has multiple threads in because this one was already stitched before I started this. Um, it is the nicest needle I have used in a very long time. Some people do not like ballpoint needles and that's okay. Personally, I do, I do prefer them. Um, so if you want to try a different needle, try a ballpoint and see, see what that does for you. Like I said, I, like I said, I have no affiliation anywhere. I just went online and I searched weavers needles and I found a place that carries them and I would say, you know, just do the same thing I did and, and find a place that has them and get them from there. I really have enjoyed stitching with this one. Now I did buy them bulk. I got um, tw 25 needles for 40 42 dollars plus shipping so in the grand scheme they are cheaper than buying like Sullivan's ballpoint needles or wherever it came out to like a dollar sixty cents per needle where if you look at the price for Sullivan's I don't remember what they cost but I'm sure it was more than a dollar sixty so just a heads up for you you can just information use it if you want if you don't like ballpoint needles just ignore me <laughs> so I think since I am at a place where I'm getting a whole new set of colors this is probably a good stopping point for our video and huh. the good news is oh I should have waited here we go I'm pulling threads down here for my next bunch of threads and little froggies trying to steal them <laughs> there we go um the good news is I've recorded this whole video and my computer didn't get the infamous blue screen of death, nor did it get the black screen of death. So that is a good sign. And we will have to let Sean, that's who worked on my computer, know that he did, he did good. He did a good job. We'll do a few more tests 
we'll um, I'll have to do a live stream to give the final decision on whether we are in a good place or not. But let's let's give a look here. Ah, well, what what he did was first of all. I only had eight megabytes of RAM for those of you that are have computer knowledge. No, 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 I lie. I had 16. What we did is we upgraded it to 64. That's the most RAM this computer can take, so that was a good decision. Then from what I was reading and what he was reading, the graphics card, the drivers for that were probably corrupt, which was part of why I was getting the blue and the black screens. So we uninstalled the, well, he uninstalled the drivers and reinstalled new ones. So, so far, so good. So we shall see. We shall see. So I'm looking at my resources here and it looks like, it looks like everything is doing okay. So we are going to call this one, one successful recording session. So with that, my friends, I think I will bid you all farewell for today. Uh, I can get back now to doing some regular videos now that hopefully everything is all, all fixed. We hope. Keep your fingers crossed. Because <laughs> one never knows. I'm not going to get too excited that we got through a whole video without a glitch, but Circle it in red in the calendar. <laughs> it might be the first in a while. <laughs> okay, folks, I will see you next time. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And don't forget, you know what I'm going to say. Come on, beat me to it. The only rules in cross-stitch are the ones you set for yourself. So until next time, 